Hello everyone. In today's lecture, we learn how to talk about experiences that we will never forget, or how to talk about stories that we will always remember. Before we start today's lecture, I suggest you adjust the speed of this video to your liking. Let's start off with reading the dialogue. As you see from the picture in front of you, we have two young men holding a conversation. So let's see what they are talking about. Did I ever tell you about the time I found some money on the train? No, what happened? I was taking the train to my judo class when I saw a wallet on the seat next to me. I picked it up and it had about $150 in it. What did you do? Did you keep the money? No, I handed it to a police officer when I got off. Good for you. That was really honest of you. I had a nice surprise three months later. They called me and gave me the money. They couldn't find the person who lost it. Well, I will never forget the time I lost money. Oh no, was it a lot? I was on the train when I realized I had forgotten my train pass. I took my wallet to pay for the ticket and my wallet was empty. I was sure I had about $100. So what did you do about the ticket? How did you get home? Oh, I had to get out at the next station and walk. I went home and I searched everywhere. Did you ever find it? You won't believe it. I found, I found it the next time I did laundry. It was in my pants pockets the whole time. As you saw in the conversation above, sometimes we need to talk about our experiences to, to other people, especially those experiences that we will never forget. So how do we do that? What linguistic instructions do we usually do so as we speak about uh, the stories that we will always remember? Did I ever tell you? Did I ever tell you? Or have I ever told you? In this example we have, did I ever tell you about the time I found $150? Did I ever told you about the time I got infected? For instance, I got infected with the virus, for instance. Did I ever tell you about the time I got infected? Did I ever tell you about the time I got arrested? Did I ever tell you about the time I got arrested? Did I ever tell you about the time I got hit by a bus? Did I ever tell you about the time I got hit by a bus? So as you can see, uh, we can use this linguistic instruction, did I ever tell you or have I ever tell you, to talk about a variety of experiences that we might have had. Um, I have uh, constructed a dialogue for you um, so that uh, uh, you uh, can see clearly um, how to talk about our experiences. Did I ever tell you about the time I got hit by a car? Did I ever tell you about the time I got hit by a car? No, what happened? No, what happened? I was crossing the street when a car came from nowhere. The driver was frantic. I was crossing the street when a car came from nowhere. The driver was frantic. Okay, so here we have somebody talking about um, uh, an experience in which uh, he got hit by a bus or by a car. Okay. Uh, was it bad? Was it bad? I got my shin bone broken. I got my shin bone broken. What happened after? The driver got arrested and an ambulance took me to the nearest hospital. The driver 
got arrested and an ambulance took me to the nearest hospital. As I said, in life we have a variety of experiences. Some experiences are shocking and striking enough so that we cannot eliminate them from our memory. In order to, to talk about these experiences, we use Did I Ever Tell You to start uh, narrating the story or I have ever have I ever tell, told you also to start narrating our story now I want you to also focus on this how do we respond to someone's um, to someone's story or experience for instance if we want to ask for more details we, we want the other person to proceed um, telling us about uh, her or his story, we, we use this, um, uh, this uh, construction, no, what happened? No, what happened? It means, please proceed, go on with your story. I want to hear your story. Um, also, sometimes we ask uh, about more details. We ask um, about their reaction to the story or something like that. So we can, we can say, what did you do? What did you do? Okay. Now let's see this practice. In this practice, um, we have to listen to uh, CD2 track 51. So we listen to it and we will come back later. Telling a story. Practice one. Listen to the example. Student A chooses one of the pictures below and tells student B his or her story. Student B asks questions to get more details. Reverse roles. Did I ever tell you about the time I found $150? No! What happened? I was taking the train to my judo class when I saw a wallet on the seat next to me. As you can see in this practice, we have four real-life situations or real life incidents. In the first picture we have broke my leg, locked myself out, helped a hurt child, met a famous person. Of course I will not be doing all of them. I chose uh, the second picture on the right. Locked myself out. So let's see. Did I tell you about the time I locked myself out? Did I tell you about the time I locked myself out? No, what happened? No, what happened? I was busy reading the paper when I unconsciously locked myself out with no key on the outside. I was busy reading the paper when I unconsciously locked myself out with no key on the outside. As it is in real life situations, it is not possible for someone to proceed in his or her story without our response to it. So how do we respond to other people's stories? For instance, when we have the situation, I turned the wallet in the police into the police, I turned the wallet into the police, our response might be, good for you, that was really honest of you. Did they find the owner? So in here, you, um, um, you ask for more details. You ask for more details. Did they find the owner? Okay. Uh, when, we, when we respond to other people's stories, it means that we are interested in what they have to say. And this is really polite uh, of us to do so. Okay. Um, also, sometimes we pass judgment uh, on other people's stories. For instance, that was terrible of you to do, for instance. Sometimes we, we praise people for what uh, they have done. For instance, in the situation we say, good for you, good for you. We are praising him for making that decision. Okay, sometimes we pass judgment, but it is less polite to pass judgment. But it is okay, it is also a response. Okay, for instance, when you say, 
that was terrible of you, um, or uh, uh, you know better than that, you know better than that. Okay, so we either pass judgment or, or we praise other people. At the same time, we ask for more, uh, for more uh, details. Uh, this indicates that we are interested in what other people have to say. Now we have this practice. Now we have this practice. In this practice, um, we have four situations. You have to choose one of them to talk about. Okay, you, um, the focus in here is on the response, is on the response. How do you respond to someone's story? Okay, I have not chosen one of them, but I have chosen something from my own experience. I hurried to assassinate the girl. I hurried to assassinate the girl. Okay, to resuscitate, to revive when someone is unconscious, okay, when someone is black out, is black out, okay, uh, when someone is unconscious, you need to do what, to do first aid so as you revive them, so they are, uh, uh, they are back conscious, okay. Um, so uh, this is what the word resuscitate means. I had it to resuscitate the girl. Okay, you see here the response uh, is praising what uh, I have done. Good for you. Good for you. Was she all right then? Was she all right then? This is, uh, I have responded in this way. So we ask about more details about the consequences of uh, resuscitating uh, the girl. Not necessarily the consequences, but what happened after resuscitating the girl. Yes, she pulled herself together. Yes, she pulled herself together, which means uh, she is uh, back um, in her normal, normal well-being. Now we have this uh, exercise, this is the last exercise that we will be doing today. We listen to track 40, uh, 54 from CD2 and we will come uh, back to do it. Listen to Lisa's story. Think of a good title for the story and write it below. The most embarrassing thing that ever happened to me was a couple of years ago when I had just passed my driving test. I was driving through the city, very pleased and happy that I was driving on my own at last. There was quite a lot of traffic, but it wasn't too bad. In fact, the cars were moving very slowly, which was fine for me. Then suddenly, the engine cut out. The car stopped? Yes! Well, I tried to start it up again, but I must have flooded the engine or something because it just wouldn't start. Oh no! What did you do then? I just didn't know what to do. I started to panic. I was in the middle of this really busy street. Four lanes of traffic all around me, cars starting to line up behind me. I couldn't leave the car to go and get help. I just sat there, terrified. That sounds awful. How embarrassing. And then what happened? I suppose I was sitting there for at least ten minutes, but it seemed like an hour. And then a man came up out of the subway, saw what was happening, and came over to the car. And together we pushed the car over to the sidewalk, out of the way of the traffic. I was so relieved. I mean... He knew immediately what to do, and it was so simple, really. Wow! What did you say to him? Well, that was the funny thing. He couldn't speak any English, so I couldn't tell him how grateful I was. He just smiled and went away. And you never saw him again? No, I never saw him again. This story was about a, an embarrassing situation that Lisa found herself into. And this is an experience that she will never forget. Now, the first requirement of this uh, exercise is to give a title for Lisa's story. Uh, here, 
I have given two titles for her. First drive went wrong. First drive went wrong. This title focuses on Lisa as the one who who is having this experience. The other one is the anonymous rescuer. The anonymous rescuer. And this title focuses on the man who helped her push the car to the side way. What is the second requirement? Part two. How did uh, the how did Lisa feel at each, each stage of the story? Write adjectives under each picture. Okay, in the track that we have just listened to, there are certain adjectives used um, to describe her feelings at each stage of her story. In the first stage, uh, she was calm and driving. Uh, she was happy. So the adjectives used as are pleased and happy. The adjectives used are pleased and happy. In the second stage we, uh, uh, of her story, uh, we see that Lisa cannot um, start up the engine uh, and there are cars uh, lining up behind her. She doesn't know what to do. She was uh, uh, <clears throat> in panic, actually. So, uh, so uh, the adjectives that is used in the track is terrified, is terrified. And since um, she was uh, in panic, we can say that she was frantic or she was anxious. We can infer these, um, these qualities of her in that situation. In the, uh, at the third stage, of her story, we see that there is a man helping her, pushing the car to the sideway, and also he helped her start up the engine again. She was relieved and grateful. She was relieved because there was not uh, something really uh, serious with the engine. And also, she was grateful to the man who she couldn't, whom she couldn't thank uh, because he uh, does not um, speak English. That is everything from me today. Um, in today's lecture, we learned how to speak about uh, the experiences that we have had, um, experiences that we will never forget. We cannot eliminate from our memory. Please um, take the time to, to do the other exercises. If you have any question, you know where to go. Until next time.